Despite its size, the Hybrid Nano might be one of our most popular tools in the Bigfoot family. But at the same time, it's probably one of the most misunderstood. So in this week's episode of Ripa's Replies, we're gonna answer a whole lot of questions similar to this one. To make sure that you guys out there that already have one are getting maximum performance out of it, and if you're considering getting a Nano or adding it to your collection, you know what to do with it right out of the box. The world of paint correction and polishing is getting more complicated by the minute. And every week we receive hundreds of questions in comments on social media, on videos and emails. We wanna answer those questions. This is Rupa's Replies. So we'll knock the first really common question out right away. Do you need a Nano? And it really depends. It depends on the type of work that you do. The Nano offers an incredible amount of versatility and can reach into places that pretty much no other polisher can. The addition of options of corded or battery, the three different movements, all these things make it extremely versatile. If you find yourself struggling to do edge work in tight spaces, maybe a Nano is a good fit for you. If you're not struggling and you've got a three inch polisher and you're getting everything done, then maybe you don't need one. So now one of the most common things we see trip Nano owners up and that is configuration. Now, when you purchase a fully loaded kit, like the box kit here, it is gonna come with three attachments. You're gonna have a green attachment. That's your on center rotary. So it spins just on a central axis. You have a blue attachment. That one is gonna be your three millimeter orbital and you're gonna have a red attachment. That's your 12 millimeter orbital. The biggest mistake we see people making is they're grabbing that blue one and setting it up. And then we get emails like, you know, I can't maintain rotation. It doesn't seem like it's polishing very much. Well, a three millimeter orbit is gonna be a small orbit. Actually, we really only intend that to be used for sanding or extremely, extremely light polishing applications. If you are trying to run in orbital mode and you want correction power, then you're gonna wanna run the 12 millimeter adapter or the red one. The other one that we get a lot of questions about is the green one, the rotary adapter. And when would you use it? If the 12 millimeter does a great job of cutting and polishing, when do we use the rotary? Well, actually, if you ask our team, the rotary mode is probably the most popular way to use the Nano. Now, I think a lot of you out there right now are going, ooh, rotary, that scares me. I don't know how to use a rotary. I'm scared of damaging something. You don't need to be. And there's one key factor to look at with this. Now, if we look at pad size, with the Nano, we're gonna be running the 40 or the 70 millimeter pads in orbital mode. In rotary mode, we're only gonna recommend the 40 millimeter pad. Now with rotary, the smaller the pad gets, the less edge speed it has, the less velocity at the edge of the pad. So actually a smaller rotary pad is not very aggressive. But what it does give you, it gives you tons of precision so that you can work into tight spaces with no offset. With an orbital tool, the pad is moving back and forth. At 12 millimeters of orbit, that's a good amount of orbit. When we're working in these small spaces, we want as much precision as we can get. So by centering the pad, keeping it in rotary mode, we can be very precise into those edges. And because it's only a 40 millimeter and by downsizing the pad, we're getting less aggressive, it means it's perfectly safe to use even if you're not an experienced rotary operator. Now you're still gonna wanna exercise caution, stay off of sharp edges and curves, but you can use rotary mode on the Nano even as a novice and be fairly safe with that and get the level of precision you want. On the subject of rotary mode, the other common question about that we get is when people try and thread the larger backing plate on with rotary and it comes into contact with this plastic shroud here and they go, what doesn't fit, doesn't work. That's kind of our subtle way of telling you we don't recommend that. We want you to run that 40 millimeter pad with rotary mode for the exact reasons we just talked about. It's a little bit less aggressive because we've downsized that pad. We wanna be as safe as possible in edge work and things like that. Also, that larger pad, if we think in scale, if this was a full-size tool scaled up to that big, the pad and its ratio versus the gears and the motor is actually quite high. So it's a lot of force placed on the tool. Those larger pads can stress your Nano. You wanna to stick to that 40 millimeter pad size just to minimize it. We do see people, they'll pull the plastic shroud off so they can run the larger pad in rotary mode. We don't advise it, but if you're gonna do it, use a lot of caution. You're putting a lot of stress on the tool and you don't wanna break a very expensive specialty tool like your Nano. A big mistake we see people making is excessive amounts of pressure. What we want you to target is about 50% or less compression of the foam. So about half the height when you're pressing down. If you see the foam getting compressed to more than 50% of its original height, you're pressing too hard. 
It can be a hard thing to master because it is a very delicate touch and it feels like it's gonna need more pressure to do its job, but really it doesn't. The foam, once it's compressed, which doesn't take a lot of pressure, starts to go to work. So if you find that you're maybe not getting results as fast as you'd like with your Nano, or maybe you're struggling to maintain rotation even with that red 12 millimeter adapter, try lightening up the pressure just a little bit. Pay very close attention to the sidewall of the foam and make sure it's not more than 50% compressed. So hopefully that's helpful for those of you out there with a Nano and those of you who are considering getting a Nano for yourself. There's a few simple things that can be confusing because there's a lot of parts in this kit and a lot of versatility, but armed with this information, hopefully you're gonna get better results. And if this video was helpful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Leave a question or a comment below. That's where a lot of these questions for Rupa's replies are coming from. We hope you're enjoying and we'll see you on the next one.